think it's very healthy to get outside and just be in nature. Good morning, I'm in Evergreen, Colorado today. I'm about to go for a walk in Bergen Park. Evergreen's divided sort of into two parts, one by the interstate where you get off the exit and then you go around a mountain pass, down through a valley area, and then eventually you come to the lake that I was at in a previous video. And that's where Evergreen proper is, the old town, original Evergreen established, I don't know, 100 years ago, something like that. The Evergreen by the interstate is where all the commercial areas are. And Bergen Park is sort of perched in this area right in between. I think it's a small community and town unto itself that's not really a part of Evergreen, but sort of is, almost like a suburb. My hip is still bothering me from walking when I get up to about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. But I'm still trying several times a week to go walking and do stretching exercises daily to try to improve the hip. And all of this is in preparation for the Camino that I keep talking about that I'm planning on going to in September. I have tickets to go over there with six friends. This is organized by a client and friend, Stan, that you can see in previous videos. And he's put together a group of uh, his close friends to go over to this Camino. This is the Portugal route from Porto in Portugal up to Santiago in Spain. I really enjoy walking in Colorado, just a stroll through the woods. I think it's very healthy to get outside and just be in nature, whether you're walking, sitting still, or uh, just writing or reading a book, but just to get outdoors in nature and surrounded by trees and plants and away from uh, man-made structures. Well, that was a very nice walk. It was probably 40, 45 minutes. I'm gonna gather up my things, head out to Starbucks. I'm over at my friend Steve's house again, and we're doing round two, trying to work on my tire and running into another roadblock. This time I went and got a 20 ton jack so that we can lift the step van. Last time we weren't able to lift it with Steve's jack, and so we're set on that. But our hurdle this time is getting the air impact to take off the lug nuts. And apparently we don't have enough air pressure or torque in order to do that. So we've got to figure out if we can uh, do it manually with a, a bar or something else. When I was driving down here to meet with Steve, I noticed a, a squeaking noise and a, sort of a clicking noise coming from my engine. And I, squeaking to me is like a belt. So I asked Steve to look at the belts on the engine and he noticed that the serpentine belt had separated. It's uh, four strands and two had separated. And so we went to the parts store to get a replacement belt and we're about to install that. So um, we're giving up on doing the brakes tonight and looking at the belt. So that's the project now. We're running into one more roadblock. The belt that we bought has seven little ridges on it and we need one with eight. So I might not have a belt uh, to put back on my vehicle tonight. That's the next morning. It's been an interesting evening, an interesting day. Today we called a Cummins dealership here in Denver and I found the right belt. It's $56, so we're headed over there to get that. But I spent the morning researching belts. There's like nine different belts for this particular engine, depending on which alternator you have, whether you have AC, whether it's a Dodge, whether it's a Freightliner, all that kind of stuff. So it's been quite the uh, test. We're gonna go over there and get the new belt. We've arrived at the Cummins Parts Place, and we're going in to get my new belt. We're back here at Steve's house and we're going to put the belt on. It's probably 100 degrees out. It's uh, two o'clock in the afternoon here in Denver and it's just sweltering hot. Standing in the shade right now, I'm gonna try to get this on, get this thing fixed so I can get back in the shade. This belt is sort of unique in that it has these eight ridges on the backside. 
anyway that was one of the things we had to find um, because it was shredded before we weren't sure how many ridges were on there until Steve started looking at the pulleys As you can see, this is turning out to be quite the pain. We can't get it uh, around the serpentine path and get the tensioner released enough to get it in place. It's just so close. A couple more millimeters and it would go, but it's just not going. We think we finally got it. We got the belt around it. We had to use a larger like leverage bar and it took two of us pulling up there to get it in place and Steve was able to get it around the last little piece. It's a real tight fit. We're going to start it up and see if everything runs or if it flies apart. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hop in and uh, start it up. Well, it's been quite the day. Uh, getting that belt back on was just horrendously difficult. It probably took us 20, 30 minutes with two of us. And finally, Steve just had to go out and get a giant, uh, big pry bar in order to uh, get enough leverage to get that last little couple of millimeters to be able to slide that on. So thankfully that's on. Everything's running fantastic. And uh, I'm actually heading this evening down to Monument and I'm going to be working with Doug again tomorrow on some of the construction and build out in the back. So I'm really looking forward to that and hopefully getting a bed frame. So exciting stuff here in the near future. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.